covering my hand while I'm playing is not like good value. I mean like ad nauseum has some play to it and like your combo pieces are interaction. This deck doesn't have that. No, delay is a bad stream experience too. Like the 24 hour stream is supposed to be fun for everyone, not a, not a giant headache for me. Looks like a worse version. I don't have an educated opinion on whether or not the format is good, bad, or otherwise. I just know that I can pay $25. Aaron Kent with the 16-month resubscription. 16 months of watching people get got. Thank you and welcome. I think... So, I'm just going to play Flooded Strand and pass here. I don't actually know what we're looking for. Like, we have lands and we have spells. And holding up Spell Pierce might be good on the first turn here, so... Uh, as far as why I'm touching the 1v1 Commander format, M Magic Online runs these Magic Online Challenge events every single weekend, and two weekends ago, witty name here with the 3-month three subscription. Thank you for the continued support. Welcome back. I do appreciate it. Um, anywho, uh, two weeks ago, Magic Online... I actually look, need to look and see how many this past week, but two weeks ago, their challenge event only had... Um, only had 31 players in an event that paid out to the top 32 players. So, like, pretty, pretty good, pretty good value to play in the event that, like, you know, pays out to more people than, like, we're playing in the event. So, like, as someone who, like, enjoys playing Magic in general and, like, would like to play in an event that's literally free money, like, let's play some Commander. <laughs> Let's plow this now so that way our Stabcaster Rage is online next turn. They could be a Wasteland deck, so let's just fetch the basic here since we want to work our way up towards this Chase the Mind Sculpture on the line here. I think I'm just going to pass here. My opponent just commented that they mulled their opener because they assumed I'd be playing Big Red or a Chalice deck. That's really funny. Hey, I'm just going to hold up Counterspell this turn, I think. Go ahead and ponder here. Basic Island. Maybe I should play this to play around Days. I feel like they're not a Days deck, though. Huh. I think I actually want to keep all of these. Because, like... It, basic Swamp usually means my opponent's playing something a little bit slower, like probably a Grixis or a Sultai control deck, which means that, like, this Jace is going to be really, really good. And if the first Jace gets countered, I would like to have a second one. Yeah, Pierce sure, Jace. Okay, that sounds great. Okay. I mean, I have a Stabcaster Mage in play, so you don't really want to be unsubbing that. And they just bottomed the Jace that was on top of my deck. Again, pretty sure they're not a Daze deck. They would have dazed my Spell Pierce. I'd like to Jace Storm. Mmm... Maybe I'm supposed to Fate Seal there in case of Lightning Bolt. It's very possible I'm supposed to Fate Seal there. A lot of these decks don't play Bolt, the non non Delver variations. It's kind of close, I think. 
and crack this for a tundra. Punished. Yep. Yep. Uh, oh, 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 nope. Uh, God. I wanted to shuffle those away. Um. I pick you. Yeah, Blood Moon. Blood Moon's good in this matchup. Am I gonna attack the Jace? No. no. Let's play the Stoneforge Mystic. No, I'd already passed. The stops are locked, but I'd already passed. So even if they weren't locked, I wouldn't have gotten it. Grab a Sword of Fire and Ice here and pass the turn. They have abrupt decay. I'm gonna be a little bit sad. And see, like this is like one of the things where like Magic Online is just like different than Paper Magic, because like people talk about these things being the same thing. But like my opponent just put a card on the bottom of my library. I could crack this fetch and look and see what they put on the bottom of my library if this was Paper Magic. Big fish, sure. Kind of weird that they didn't leave this up. If I draw a Snapcaster Mage, I could Snap Plow them now. Um, just going to activate this and put the Sword of Fire and Ice into play. Equip this to my True New Nemesis and then crack their Jace for five. Unfortunately, this won't trigger my sword, but like, I've got a sword on a True Dame. Good luck. You got Counterspell up. Oh, they could have uh, Abrupt Decay here. Hopefully it's Culligan's Command, and I can Counterspell it. Hopefully it's Culligan's Command. Sweet. I mean, True Day Nemesis was, like, designed for Legacy, right? Like, there's no way no one ever... This card's not even very good in Commander, right? Like this card was basically designed for Legacy. Alright, now if they rip another Cole against Commander or Snapcaster Mage, we could be in trouble. The fact that we have this Jurgit probably means we're fine. And if they don't have something this turn, like the Sword of Fire and Ice is about to bury them. Especially once I strap in Umazawa's GTA. Sure, yeah, come get me. Because this card lets me gain life for some reason. Start with the Brainstorm here, since we drew a land. Put back this and this. I might want to redraw that Brainstorm next turn. Play this, since they have no cards in hand. Equip this here. Deck with this. Yeah, I think I want to draw that Brainstorm. It's probably fine. So, hit you... Triggers, Sword of Fire and Ice, Kill Death Rate Shaman. Can gain four on demand now with the Jute. The Stoneforge Mystic is going to pop in front of this Gurmag Angler to gain five. And our true name will continue running away with the game. All right, all right, we have a game as they say. It's a good top deck. 
What are we destroying? There's one other spell pierce left in my deck. I might brainstorm for it here, I think. Yeah, I could hit a force of will as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna crack this fetch and then brainstorm. We know there's a land on top of my deck. So this gives me three looks instead of two. It's aggressive. Ding, fries are done. Man, these spell pierces were great this game. All right, how are we boarding? Supreme Verdict's probably fine. Blood Moon seems great. Uh, the Blue Blasts are excellent. Uh, Force of Will's pretty terrible. I think this is an Engineered Explosives matchup. Is the Rip fine? I don't know if I want Rip with my Stabcaster Mages. I guess they have Snap, Culligan's Command, and Deathrite Shaman. Yeah, the Rip's probably fine. Staticaster is great. I don't I don't know if I believe you. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that Watsi intentionally makes Legacy expensive is the reason why it's not popular. Or why it's less popular than uh, Modern. Verdict versus Spell Pierce here is kind of interesting. I think I want the Spell Pierces. They actually don't have that many threats. I guess Plow is not stellar. Yeah, I'm gonna go two Plow, two Verdict. Verdict. Yeah, I think I like that a little bit better. What do we think of this, chat fam? That seem reasonable. What do we think? Lincoln, Lincoln, I've been thinking. Let's submit like this. I guess it seems fine. Can plow a, plow a Shamalaman on one. I can play the Scalding Tarn so we can hold up a Blue Blast on two, or a Spell Pierce. I love countering cantrips. A lot of times, especially these Brainstorm decks, we keep medium hands, like, counting on a Brainstorm resolving. So, like, if they if they ponder or whatever here, I'm going to Spell Pierce a ton out of ten. No, Flusterstorm doesn't counter Jace. And Jace is really good. I don't know that that's strictly true, basic. Cantrips, especially ones like Brainstorm, kind of put the skill in a different spot than other decks. So, like, for instance, um, for instance, uh, when you're playing a Brainstorm Ponder deck, you have to make less critical decisions about how you're mulliganing, and you make more sequencing decisions during the game. Do I want to just Stoneforge here? I don't think I do. I'm just going to chill for now and pass back. So what? Alright, that brainstorm could resolve because that's a really bad brainstorm. I wonder if they're watching the stream and heard that I would spell pierce this. Thought I had some porn, but it was just Jeff's kid. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, affordable is relative. Hey, okay. I'd love to draw land. Um, yeah, it's fine, right? I'll, like, draw this island and then draw the ponder next turn and then get some more looks. I think I want to draw the ponder here. They don't really have any pressure going on, so let's just pass back. Yep. And why? There's no reserve list on Magic Online. Magic Online, the price of Legacy on Magic Online is just like such the perfect example of Wizards of the Coast just doesn't want you to play this format. It has nothing to do with the reserve list Legacy being expensive in paper. Legacy is expensive because Watsy wants it to be expensive because Legacy is a fun format to play. And if Legacy was affordable, people would play Legacy instead of putting money into Standard. So, you know, slide my tinfoil hat back off now, I guess, but that's basically the gist of it. Deathrite Shamalaman, sure. A ponder for another land here. And a Jace. That's pretty good. Like to shuffle? No, I would not. Let's do this and pass back now. Yeah, I I would agree with that. Those other games though, like, you can make money playing Magic Online, which is like it, which is something that really can't be said about most, like, video game type situations, right? Like, like I, li I literally cash dollars out of Magic Online into my checking account on the regular. A basic island here. I'm just gonna cash in the supreme verdict, I think. It's like a one for one. Like we take the baleful strix off the table, but like the card death rate shaman was a full card. Yeah, someone else said that too, Kitchen Finks, but like again, when you're buying cards on Magic Online, you're making an investment like you're not you're not just losing money like when you put money into hearthstone like when you put cards into magic online you can sell back out for 80 to 90 percent of that value at any given point with no no waiting or turnaround yeah that's fine And the amount of money i've cashed out of magic online in the last four months would more than pay for legacy delver plus Le Modern Tron, which are the decks I've been making the most money with. So, like, you know. Okay, opponent's got four cards to our 14, but they, they have more mana, which is a little bit bad for us. If they stick a Jace here, we could probably force our own Jace through, but, like, they have Lightning Bolts in their deck, which is bad for us. Yeah. So we're not in a great spot right now. Stoneforge Mystic. I agree. I agree that the average player probably doesn't, but like if you are good, there is money to be made, which is which like, you know, even if you are good at a lot of games, like there isn't money to be made from playing them. I think I'm supposed to draw three here. And dead. All right, let's just get get on past that there. We're not high enough up on clock that I'm going to try and elongate this game. Um, yeah, I think I like how I boarded. Maybe the fluster storms are worthwhile. I'm just going to submit again. Point zero one percent, right? Yep. Yeah, exactly. Like, 
It's not like, like in Magic Online and Hex, I can literally queue up a tournament every single weekend and like pay an entry fee. I don't have to like go through hoops to qualify or like jump through Batterfly or out of client pairings things and like hope that whatever organization is running it is actually going to pay me. Like I just, I know what the prizes are and it's consistent and it's easy to get into. And I can just buy a deck outright instead of like crafting things down. Like... I mean, if you just want to play Magic, there's plenty of free alternatives that'll let you do that. So. This is a mulligan. I have two Stoneforge Mystics. Yeah, fuck it. I have a Ponder. Yeah, never punished. Two lands off of this ponder, sign me up. Yeah, Gen Con was sweet. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, you only have to win about half your matches to play for free in constructed side, which is definitely true. I grab Sword of Fire and Nice here. Yep, resolves. Which format, Shriek Bub? A dredge in the good format or dredge in, in Legacy? <laughs> I actually top eight at a Legacy 1k playing dredge one time. Had never had never played the deck before. It was just like, uh, I had scrubbed out of the main event. It was like, quick, someone give me a Legacy deck. I don't care what it is. 10 out of 10, out of 10 would play a donation, donation deck list for Legacy. My opponent was nice enough to activate their Death Rite Shaman last turn, so he gets a Snapcaster now, which is... More than good. It's great. Uh huh. Yeah, these cards seem wonderful, right? I really don't want to draw the Sumazawa's GTA. But like I could cast Stoneforge Mystic before that happens, possibly. That seems fine. I think I want the plow and the reb. Uh, oh, right, we did, we streamed it with, uh, Kent Ketter, uh, did a, did a Skype call in and we streamed it together. I forgot about that. Maybe I should have shuffled those so I could find, uh, find a, what's it called? Find a, uh, Missed their land drop. Huh. So. I think I'm actually going to play the Stoneforge Mystic here. Because. While they did just miss their land drop. I know Umazawa's Jita is the top card of my deck. And I really don't want to draw it next turn. And then have this Umazawa's Jita. This, this um, Umazawa's Jita in my hand that doesn't do anything. I'm just going to go ahead and pass here. I want to hold this rub up rather than put the GTA into play. Bolting my Stoneforge Mystic, sure. Hey, King Fede 85 with the brand new 4.99 subscription. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Subscriptions are the best way you can support my content. So thank you. If we hit an untapped land here, we can 
Sword plus equip. Plunder, sure. I want all of these, right? And actually, I kind of just want to draw this brainstorm so I can put some of this equipment back. Yeah, let's do that. No. Alright, so I don't need three lands. I'm going to put the Batter Skull back, and I'm going to put the Tundra back. Yep. Yeah. Play this out. Um... Am I going to play Umazawa's Jita here? I think so. I guess if I... Yeah, I'm just going to pass, actually. And the reason why I'm just going to pass is I want to be able to red blast a cantrip, and I want to be able to pay for Flusterstorm when I do it. Because they've been missing land drops. Hmm. Am I red blasting this cantrip? I don't think so. I think I'm only red blasting a brainstorm or a ponder here. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Make sure you, uh, once you give it a chance to populate over, you pop on over to our subs, the subs only Discord server. I'm about to get a base. Eh, maybe I'm supposed to get the second white for the Council of Judgment rather than fetching around my own Blood Moon. I have another island in my hand. Um, he doesn't have Abrupt Decay. The Sword of Fire and Ice is going to be great. Let's just jam this. Discord server. Yeah, there's a subscribers only Discord server that if you link your subscribe Twitch account with your Discord app.com account, you'll see it pop up automatically. It kind of lets people poke at my brain for um for my opinions on things when I'm not uh, when I'm not live. I sometimes post in there asking for opinions on things if we're gonna try something new on stream, etc. Uh, yep, okay. I wonder if they have Coligan's Command. If they have Coligan's Command, this kind of sucks. I'm glad I waited on the sword last turn now, since they had Spell Pierce. Got to play around that. Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, I'm just going to Red Blast that. Otherwise, they're going to they're gonna kill my Snapcaster Mage here. Hard time getting started on Magic Online. I bought some tickets, did a few drafts, but I didn't get much out of that. Do you recommend? Yep, that's exactly what you should do. Magic Online is not like other digital card games. You really, the value is in constructed, and you need a constructed deck to play. You can't really grind into a deck reasonably on Magic Online. Just just pony up and buy a deck. That's the best, the best piece of advice I could give. All right. Um... They could have a removal spell for this, I guess. And if they kill this when I go to equip, I'm going to feel really bad. Brainstorm. Verdict. No. Equip. Alright, they could still have Fatal Push, I suppose. Maybe I'm supposed to draw the Flooded Strand there instead of the Brainstorm. I'm going to go ahead and plow this. Tilt. Alright. 
So if I would have taken the Flooded Strand, I could have paid for this. They did use up the last land in the graveyard, though, to do that. So I've got that going for me. So the Culligan's Command is off the table now if they have it. But I think they would have commanded last turn. Are there videos of your budget hex constructed decks? I don't have videos for all of them. I've played Redlings, and we actually played the the Sapphire deck, the Sapphire Wild deck that I posted about today. I've played some with that a little bit, but other than that, no, I don't have any other videos. Huh. Yeah, let's brainstorm in response to that and hide some of the goodies here. Um, I'm going to hide Batter Skull GT here, I think. This can resolve. Oh, that gave them a land in here. That's fine. They have to block with us anyways, right? All right. So now they need a land and a Culligan's Command to get it back into this game. And they don't produce a blocker next turn. Oh, I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. I should have... Um, I should have cracked this fetch line and probably Council Judgment that Deathrite Shaman, and then I draw a card and would get... Yeah, maybe maybe that's worth it. I don't know. The Council Judgment is a good card, I guess. If they have K Command here, we might be in trouble. It's kind of a single shatter. Oh, I guess I have better skull on top of my deck too, right? So they put a snapcaster back in their hand. They have another K command? Nope. Push my germ, I assume. I'll probably the Snapcaster, right? I think I want to just hold that land in my hand for now. Although I guess putting the eighth land into play is pretty good if they... Yeah, on the off chance... On the off chance they him us again here, I'm going to go ahead and put this land into play because an eighth land means I can bounce and replay Batter Skull in the same turn. You're not, you're not wrong, zombie. It's definitely... The germ, germ does some lift in here. Okay, yep. Wait, do they have another push in there? They don't, right? This is just like a cantrip, Snapcaster? Huh. Yeah, whenever people talk about Jitty being fine in modern, I'm like, y'all are crazy. Like, Stoneforge for Batter Skull, I think, would be more than more than okay, but like. Man.
I think next turn I'm going to get a little aggressive with this and push... I don't know if I want to push four extra damage, but pushing at least one extra, two extra seems fine. On the off chance they have like double lightning bolt, I'm going to leave the extra counters on here. I guess pushing more damage is good if they jace us. Time to restart magic online it's using two gigs of RAM. Yep. Yep. Do I want to bounce this here? Probably. It's a good draw. Means we can protect this council's judgment against a force of will. We got our other basic plans, get him to Toroct. Look for this guy over here. Jace for Prez. I think I want to just hold up Counterspell here. Rather than replay the batter stole into a spell pierce. All right, I'm gonna play this. This way, we can pay for a spell pierce on our counter spell. And again, I want to pay for a spell pierce on my counter spell, so I'm just gonna pass here. Man. I'm just going to let this happen. I think exposing ourselves to a call against command is bad. Like if I counterspell there and then they call against command, we could lose our lead on this game. But we did just get punished for not having, uh, not having used that. That cuts off a lot of their stuff. Wow, are we going to lose this game? God, that would be brutal. We could lose this game. What do you want? Maybe I was too conservative and not... We probably would have just gotten Red Elemental Blast that turn, right? Well, they can't... They can't shatter the batter skull this turn, so let's go ahead and bounce this. They can't fetch, so we got that going for us. <laughs> I need to run and grab Jake to something to drink here. Really quick. We are no bolts in our deck. Zero, zero in the 75. That one's pretty good. That one's... That one's Dece.
play our Stabcaster Mage. Him to Torak resolves. There are not any Splinter Twins in our deck. I'm just playing, mostly playing Blue White Blade. It's a good draw too. And again, like this extra GD counter is just sitting here. I should have been more aggressive with this GT. We'd have we'd have won this game if we'd have done that. There's something to drink. I don't care if you want juice. I know, your dad is very mean. So, I don't think I actually want to play the click here, because then we get destroyed by Culligan's Command. I think I just want to keep playing around that, which feels kind of weird to say, but I think I've played around it so far. I might as well just, like, keep making it not do stuff. I don't really want any of those. I'm going to get one of them. Pass here. They have to have instant speed removal for this click. Draw, draw, draw. Wonder if they have a way to get rid of this rest in peace. You have a squire opponent. The true control way, right? They might not have an answer to this. They have a forcible on their deck? Okay. Yeah, that's why Legacy's interesting, right, Pimped Up Monk? Because there's so many, so many things like that that you could or couldn't have done at any given point. That's too much mana. Oh, that's actually really good because it means I can cast the Stoneforge Mystic too. And I'll still having this up. The old two lethal threats in play. And Blood Moon would have cut this guy off of the game too at any point. Thirty-seven cards into our deck. I think. I think the real turning point is that I should have just been aggressive with this. Like they didn't have any troops in play. It was gonna. It was gonna keep being at two counters. So like I should have just left GTA where it was. I think this fetch has a target left. I should have a tundra, right? Yeah, I have a tundra. I have a second tundra left in my deck. In fact, we're gonna stop on my turn. And we're going to stop on my turn, because there's so few cards left in my deck at this point that I think it's worth fetching to thin. Uh, this is th four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I don't have enough to return and, and replay and bounce. So again... The GT has to be equipped to a creature in order to give it plus two, plus two. Which I know is confusing because it doesn't give the minus to the equipped creature, obviously, but it has to be equipped to it. Yep.
ding. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so. I'm just going to put this back and put this back. Cast this card. This is game three. Oh, I should have equipped the GTA so he couldn't draw Marsh Casualties. Should have equipped the GTA so he couldn't draw Marsh Casualties. Sometimes they play one to two of that card. <laughs> Dang it! Oh, and I put the Batter Skull on top of my deck! Holy crap! Are we gonna lose this game? Holy crap, we're gonna lose this game. Holy crap, we're going to lose this game. Why didn't I kill the Jace? Why didn't I kill the Jace? Nobody knows. There's been like so many, so many mistakes. We'll redraw the batter skull before he kills us, right? Oh, baby. Oh, baby, a Vendillion click. This thing has to be super dead, right? I'm gonna click myself so we get closer to that, that delicious batter skull. Cause like, if he has a removal spell for this, we're not gonna... We're not about to be able to fight over it. What a weird game. One where if we'd have just been more aggressive with the GTA. Counter your spell. When you pay five mana for a Fluster Storm so it doesn't counter your thing. <laughs> Opponent said GG's in chat. I don't know about good games, but I definitely won. Tried really hard to lose it. Both our Blood Boots are in the bottom, bottom ten cards of our deck. Alright, sure. We're gonna... Cut to the sponsors page here really quickly. Reload Magic Alliance it's using almost two gigs of RAM, so it's running a little bit slowly. Thank you everyone for hanging out here this afternoon or evening or morning wherever you're in the world. I know there's a lot of different things you could be doing, different people you could watch next to you spend part of your time here with us. Remember, if you're enjoying what you see, to please hit that follow button. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps other people find my stuff. If you're really enjoying what you see, please consider subscribing on Twitch, becoming a patron on Patreon. Those both support myself directly so I can spend more time doing this and less time doing other things. You can also support my content by supporting my sponsors, mtgotraders.com. 
Hogan.com. Would love to buy and sell Magic Online cards for you. If you use code Hogan PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders. CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. If you use code Jeff5 at checkout there, you can save 5% on your physical Pokemon, Magic, and Yu-Gi-Oh! singles. Inkgaming.com can help you customize your gaming experience. Using code Jeff12, you can save 12% on your orders of custom sleeves and mouse pads and playmats. And finally, SpareDeck.com offers kind of a unique service. They will rent you any physical, standard, or modern deck. So if you're someone like me who plays mostly online, and you're interested in renting a deck on occasion to play at a local event with some friends, you can rent a deck for a weekend or up to an entire month with them. Here, hanging out, playing some blue, white, red stone blade and legacy. I guess I could put that in the stream title. Uh, I use, I actually use spare deck all the time. Basically, I guess I don't use them all the time anymore. Last year, when I was traveling a lot, I used them all the time. And the couple paper of events I've gone to this year, I've used them for... It's like 10% the cost of of owning the deck. So if you're changing decks reasonably or just like don't want to own cards... I also like that, like, so long as you haven't damaged the cards where they can't be played when you send it back to them. So, like, I can rent a modern deck and riffle shuffle it and, like, not feel bad about destroying the value of cards that I own or that someone I'm borrowing them owns. I can just, like play magic how I want to play magic and not worry about the value degrading. Because, like, I've paid the rental cost as my value. Remember, if you enjoy my content, uh, this Saturday I'm going to be doing a 12 or possibly 24-hour stream starting at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to play a bunch of Magic and some Hex. Hex is a $1,000 cash tournament every Saturday, so I'm probably going to play the Hex 1K and then play Magic Online in between rounds of the Hex 1K. Since the Hex 1K is a traditional tournament, so you have to wait for rounds to finish as you play it. My Fiber Angels are coming tomorrow. Yes, it seems fine. Some good value cards. Croc is good against random combo decks. Force of Wolves decent against random combo decks. Oh, you're talking about you renting your deck to someone else. No, Spare Deck is a service that they have a bunch of cards and they do all of the rental. They don't coordinate renting between between players. If that's if that's what you're if that's what you're referring to. Hey, Jacob. Wanna come sit by Dad? Still not quite sure. No, the, the Magic Online challenges cost $25, and the probability of someone ghosting me while I play it is far too high, and streaming with a card guard or delay is bad stream content. So, like, a $7 Hex 1K, like, I don't mind being ghosted on occasion in a $7 tournament, but, like, if I paid $25 to pay in a tournament, you better believe I'm gonna take every, every possible chance I have to, like, not get screwed out of it. Um, huh. I'm still not quite sure what our opponent's playing. I think I'm gonna put the Force of Will 2 down here. And draw the Stone Forge and the GTA. And then if it looks like my opponent's playing a combo deck, we can not fetch and we can draw the other the other force. Wow. I have a big fish here. So probably don't want this force so if this is a Gurmag Angler. Yeah, Gurmag Angler. So we'll draw the GTA on top of my deck. Probably don't mind having a GTA against another fair deck. I'm going to go ahead and plow this. Let's keep the pressure off. We're going to crack this fetch now. We're already exposed to Wasteland, so I'm just going to go ahead and get my other Tundra here. Just fetch around Stifle just in case. Not 100% sure what the opponent's playing just yet. Gonna be some kind of Grixis control deck. Dr. PZ, sure. 
Dr. P. Rizzle in the, his house. Uh, don't cabal therapy me. If they therapy me, I'm going to get punished for not having forced this pyromancer. It's like, well, we have verdict to clean that up, but they could just have, they could just have therapy to take the verdict away. What's going on, Nero? Legacy's generally a money-making endeavor on this channel. Usually, usually do A-OK -okay there. I'm doing all right. I'm not sure when exactly I'm going to be able to get in all my stream time this week, so I had a quiet afternoon. I figured I'd do it now while Declan's napping and Jake's being moderately good. The goal is to do 10 hours of magic and 10 hours of hex, and the 12-hour stream isn't going to count for that. That's supposed to be a bonus since we have fiber internet, and it's been a while since I've done a long stream. Uh, friendly Legacy Leagues don't exist because Legacy isn't a friendly format. And for those who don't understand that I'm being facetious there, Friendly Legacy Leagues don't exist because um, Magic Online doesn't have enough Legacy players because Wizards of the Coast keeps Legacy artificially expensive on Magic Online. So my opponents either had their cat step on their keyboard or they are in the tank about this ponder, one of the two. Maybe they have to go change a diaper. Opponent chose not to shuffle. Okay. That means they found the Cabal Therapy? I if they found the Cabal Therapy. I feel like they're not playing a Wasteland deck. I'm gonna go grab a Batter Skull here. Am I? Or am I gonna grab a Sword of Fire and Ice? I'm gonna grab a Batter Skull. I'm only two lands away, or one land away from casting it. Hey, Mr. Silicone! With the 4 month subscription, a third of a year. Speaking of the people I'm looking forward to rewarding with a long stream. Thank you for the continued support and welcome back. I do appreciate it. All right, big bucks, no therapy. That's sad. <sighs> We're so dead. I guess we get to snap ponder for a second verdict next turn. Have one more of those. I don't think we can count on just hitting running lands here, unfortunately. And they killed our Stoneforge Mystic, so we're unable to... I guess they're probably taking away our Stabcaster Rage here, right? Yeah. This card is so good. I don't know why people play don't play Cabal Therapy in the main deck of the Grixis Delver deck. It's so good. Probably just playing some kind of Grixis mid-range type thing, it looks like. They've got some basic lands. I wonder if I'm supposed to try and Blood Moon them post-board. I feel like my opponent's sequencing's a little bit off here. They're probably supposed to brainstorm before they flash back that therapy. Probably ultimately doesn't matter. Look, some people just really like stone raining other people. And you know what? More power to them. The rest of the cards in Grixis Delver are, like, messed up enough magic cards that, like, if you're making three of your cards quite a bit worse, you're still playing better cards than most people in Legacy, so, like, it's probably fine. Do you want something to eat? There's goldfish right there. Can you get your bowl? No, you're not going upstairs. Mom and brother are napping. Yeah, I know what our opponent's playing. Thank you. Grixis mid range, whatever, mid range control, whatever you want to call it. We're going to take seven here, and then we're going to get pierced or dazed, and then die. I 
I should have forced this. That's what, that was the mistake I made this game. I should have forced this. Verdict? Verdict? It's unfortunate. Yeah, I think we just have to play the batter skull. Uh, the batter skull technically means I'm not dead on board. <laughs> technically not dead on board. I was, Marty. Should have, should have forced that first Pyromancer. Static Caster's great. Engineered Explosives is great. I don't know if these are good or not. Luster Storm is probably fine. We didn't see Jace out of them. Rest in Peace is probably okay. Probably fine. Council's judgment's a little slow. Maybe I want this as an out to Jace in case they have it. Cannon it seems narrow. It also turns off our own Snapcaster Maze. I don't think I want two cards that do that. Seems pretty decent. Needs a second and third land, but I could have true name. I guess that's fair. Trying to counsel the pyromancer is really slow and clunky. This is not the type of matchup you want surgical extraction in. Zero, zero out of ten do not want surgical extraction. I think I'd rather have a stone forge than a fluster storm there. I think bringing in one rest in peace is fine because that shuts off a lot of cards in their deck and like us having three worst stabcaster mages is fine. Is it easy to get Gen Con passes? Uh, yeah. Uh, this, this past year is actually the first year they sold, that they'd ever sold out in 50 years, but it was also the 50th anniversary, so I wouldn't expect Gen Con to sell out again next year. You want, you're not wrong. Never, never not all the surgicals. Gen Con is the largest board game convention in the United States that happens every year. It uh, happens usually the first weekend in August, I believe it is. In addition to board games, they also have uh, a lot of RPG type stuff and there's trading card things there too. Mag Watsy doesn't have any official presence, but they do pastimes as they're running, a stuff, running stuff. If you've ever been in the Indianapolis downtown area, it takes up the entirety of the convention center. And then this year it also occupied uh, Lucas Oil Stadium, the entire field, plus the lower levels of the stadium as well. Get my auto pass on since I know we don't have a force. They're playing Delver. Interesting. Alright, so this is taking my better skull. I assume, unless you have a call against command. You want some some of these? Can you grab your bowl? Can you grab the bowl? Thank you for listening. Good job. Yeah, I mean, I guess we're just passing. Mm. 
It's weird that they're- the fact there's a basic island in their deck threw me on that they were Delver. We definitely saw a basic island last game. I mean, I assume that's Umazawa. Holding on to the thing. Resolves, digging for a bolt, I assume. Oh, this is almost Rogue's List. It's Rogue's main deck, Marty. I'm a few cards off on his sideboard, though. I added a second Blood Moon because I like Blood Mooning nerds. Oh, it's not like I can cast another spell anyway, so I might as well equip and try and attack, I guess. They not have a bolt? That would be so good if they don't have a bolt. <laughs> That's an interesting card to have. I mean, I'm guessing I'm guess I'm glad they have this instead of uh, Ancient Grudge. Yeah, I'd rather be killing people in Legacy. <sighs> That's fine. I didn't want that Supreme Verdict anyways. Oh, they took my true name because I can block. Smart. Running lands, please. Times. You know, just remember, Legacy is definitely one of the lowest variant formats in Magic, but low variance doesn't mean no variance. Like, that hand was a fine keep. Um... I don't think expecting it to third land on time is reasonable, but, like, we have a lot of cantrips and actual lands in our deck, so, like, expecting it to third land in a reasonable amount of time is not awful. We did keep one lander on the play with a cantrip, but, like, we saw... What? Six, six extra cards and only had one land in it and no other cantrips? Numbs the beats. Grixis Silver is the best deck in Legacy for a reason. What this is really reminding me of is that I should just play Tron. I should just, just play Tron. The Tron Legacy deck is so good. We're definitely playing that some more this week. We would have played it this afternoon, but Traders was out of Collective Brutalities in stock, so... Here we are, doing these really thick, just magic online things. Alright, let's get to that wonderful sponsors page here for a second while I reload the wonderful software that is Magic Online. What is my overall record with Legacy Tron? Uh, we went 2-3 in the first two leagues, 4-1 in the third, and 3-2 in the last three. But I fucked up three of the losses in there. So the deck could have carried through three more of those. But even, even not counting, even counting the matches where the deck would have won, but I, I made sizable mistakes, uh, I'm still over 50%. Man, it's drank super slow today. Seems okay. It's a little soft to a wasteland.
Probably not Grixis Delver. Could be Sultai Delver. Sure. This deck has like five more lands than Grixis Delver, but it also has four less cantrips, so it's like kind of a wash, I think. Don't daze me, bro. Yeah, it could be four color. I'm putting them on not having a spell piercer or daze here because I feel like they would have fought over that counter spell if they did. Maybe they don't fight over it if it's daze, but if they have spell pierce. I think they're like 10 out of 10 pull the trigger on this. There's links to all of my deck lists below the stream. There's a big button that says MTG decks in the inf information section. So definitely check that out. Uh, yes, Johnny redeemed. All right, well, I'm going to pick the two cards he's discarding rather than risk losing this Jace. Do they have a force too? If they also have a force, this is not going to be pretty for us. I'm going to do this now because we can get snap him next turn. I feel like they have a force and that's why they pause there. This is probably going to get forced, yeah. Hello, Declan Scott. Did you have a good nap? Did you come say hi to the internet? What are you doing? And this is there, Jace, and then we die? God, why are we playing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, this is this has been good. This is reminding me why why working this hard in Legacy. The games are interesting, but man, man, you gotta work for every single win you get through, right? Let's grind and grind and grind and grind and grind. Can we just kill people? We're just going to kill people from now on. What makes Eldrazi or Post better than Tron? I don't know. Tell, tell me. Make an argument for your side of the table, and I'll make an argument for mine. I think all three of the decks are subpar legacy decks. They're all far worse than Grixis Delver. Like Moonstop, exactly, see? Just crush these nerds. Alright, any order, shuffle. Elves is great until you play against Storm or Sneak and Show. I think if I'd rather get people, I'd rather play one of the good combo decks. Like, Elves has an okay, an okay fair deck matchup, but it's pretty bad against the other combo decks in the format. This was post board. We'd have a better chance right now because we'd have three rebs in our deck, but it's not, so we don't. Maybe. Yep. How much longer is your stream? I don't know until I'm done. Why we have plans?
Uh, Shriek Bob, you send me a message on Twitch, Twitter, or Discord, preferably Twitch or Twitter, or, or sorry, Twitch or Discord, saying, would you play this deck and you link me a deck list? I say, yes, I would play that deck. And if I say yes, then you send me the cost of playing a deck in a league. And if I say no, you'd be very sad and you don't send me the money. But most most things I'll play, most reasonable, reasonable things. I concede that at that point. Let's go ahead and bring in these Blood Moons and this Rest in Peace. And these Pyro Blasts and Red Elemental Blasts. Let's cut these Force of Wills. Let's cut one Verdict and one Sword Supply Shares. Yeah, I think I like this. Smitteroonie. I'm going to start working through the donation deck list I have backed up. I've got three on the list right now. I'm going to clear those out. Maybe we'll play a couple of them this weekend. I'm going to do the long stream. Yeah, general combo deck, Storm, Sneak and Show. Uh, it's fine against Elves, too. Just like decks that have specific cards that you don't want them casting. Specifically combo decks, don't bring them in in the mirror. Uh, whatever deck site that allows me to import or export a text list is ideal. Or if it's on Discord, you could just send me, send me just the raw text in chat. Or like tapped out, deck stat, goldfish, whatever random, random deck formatting site you enjoy using. They all pretty much have an export to text function. What are my thoughts on Gideon of the Trials and Legacy? We played it a bunch in, um... We played it a bunch in Dead Guy Ale. It seemed fine there. It's, like, reasonable against Storm and decent against the other fair decks. It's like a pseudo-removal spell. So it seems fine. I don't think you want a bunch of them. I think it's worse depending on how many Swords of Plashers you expect in your local format, but if you expect mostly, like, Abrupt Decay Culligan's Command decks, it's probably fine. What are my thoughts on Did Gael and Legacy at this point? I think it's one of the many decks that's probably fine to be playing if you want to play a deck that's not Grixis Delver, but if you're registering a deck that's not Grixis Delver in most Legacy tournaments, you're probably not very serious about winning. Yeah, it dies to Abrupt Decay, but, like, the tempo loss is less. And, like, your deck with Gideon in it probably has other things that also die to Abrupt Decay, so, like, you're not blanking the card anyways. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this with a Ponder. We're probably just, like, never gonna find another land and die, but, like, Rest in Peace is pretty good. I've not. I generally try to avoid playing things that are miserable to play on Magic Online. Since I mostly just play digitally these days. Alright. Five looks at a land. Oh, that's a tilt. I think I'm supposed to keep this ponder. Oh, you know what? I stacked these wrong. I should have. We we're not getting punished here, but I should have drawn the red elemental blast because if they thought seized me, they could have taken this ponder. So really small sequencing mistake here. We didn't get punished for it, but uh, we could have. Oh, I'd love to draw this. Uh, Matt and I met through Magic. Uh, he lives local to where I met, and we met at a uh, local game store. Back when I was still doing that. Man, I haven't done the LGS thing in forever. Are they cantrip here? Am I blasting them? I don't think so. Probably just gonna crack this for a Tundra and then cast Rip next turn. Matt was one of the few other people dumb enough to want to travel a bunch with me. Dang. It's a red source, so I can fight over this with red elemental blast. I 
We want to avoid cracking this fetch until I need the red mana. Am I supposed to just rib this? Nah. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be streaming any more hex today. We'll uh, we'll do some more hex tomorrow for sure. I don't even think I'm going to have enough time to finish this league. Uh, Declan and my wife are both up from their nap, which was the only reason I'm still on now. Volcanic Island, sign me up. So I'm going to go ahead and crack this fetch for a basic planes. And then go ahead and cast this true name nemesis, leaving a uh, red elemental blast. If you check my YouTube archives, we streamed Hex this morning for about two and a half hours. Three hours, maybe? Something like that. But they're posted on my YouTube channel now. We played a really sweet Sapphire Wild combo deck. That's kind of awesome. That's only like 20 bucks to build. Get that. Squire resolves. Another another ambush viper. We are ready to go to town here. Yeah! Ambush viper beat down. Uh, the Miracles deck always seems pretty mediocre whenever I play against it. It's got a really terrible Delver matchup. So, like, if you're playing a fair deck that's not Delver and you're not beating up on Delver, I feel like you've just, like, made poor life decisions. I'm just gonna, like, end step, play two Snapcaster Rages here. My body is ready to be Culligan's commanded. Arr, vipers go. Alright, so we have more removal for this then? Yep. Grab our sort of fire and ice. Rude. It's a good draw. Uh, drawing a land kind of sucks there. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna have to. I think we're gonna have to elemental blast the Snapcaster Mage. To, like slow the clock down. Chose the shuffle. That's good for us. Yay, magic. I 
you go. Alright, don't okay, command me. And this gets a single hit and this game is over. Sweet. Good stuff. Man, Rest in Peace is pretty well positioned in this current format, isn't it? I wonder if there's a good Rest in Peace Helm Energy Field deck. Jokes on you, says protection from blue. If I had swords, DOT, that was lethal. Good point. Third bit of grinding. Um, I don't think I want this verdict in my deck. I'm bringing a fluster storm. A couple of plows seem fine. It's a little bit awkward not having an answer to their. Oh, I have council's judgment to answer a true name. And we can just counter it too. Two pieces of equipment in the opener is pretty mediocre along with only one land. So it's like not exciting, but it's fine. Bottom of fifth land. Good pick up until we get thoughts these next turn. Not a thought sees, God bless. That's pretty good. Sweet, they don't have any forces because they're auto passing, so let's hope they don't play discard spell this turn, and then we get to slam this blood moon and just win the game. And be more than good, it'd be great. Opponents waiting and responding. Do you, who would YOLO it here? Do we YOLO the Blood Moon? I feel like I'm not supposed to. I feel like I'm supposed to sit. I feel like I'm supposed to sit on the Blood Moon. They could, like, tap out for a Jace next turn. Never dot YOLO. Did we see any counter spells out of them last game? Did they cast the card actual factual counterspell last game at all? Does anyone remember?
They didn't, right? I cast counter spell, they cast him. Yeah, whatever. This keeps him off of a Jace next turn, potentially. casting this? I feel like I'm casting this. Which means death rate shaman doesn't make mana. Go. All right, nobody gets any spells. This is going to be my last match of the afternoon. I have to uh, take care of some stuff around the house out the folks, out the family is awake. Sure. They could have a Coligan's Command. Because they have a basic swamp. I think I'm actually just going to like hang out until we have 8 mana to play this batter skull. I think I'm gonna shuffle this. I think I'd rather look for a, a blue source. Yeah, and honestly, that's like that's one of the reasons why like I talked about in this first game of this match, where, like you have to work for everything. Like at least we get some we get some freebies with these blood boots, right? Just like some some amount of that's actually pretty decent, right? Would not mine another Stone Forge Mystic here. Grab a Sword of Fire and Ice here. Slide that right on into play. Although I guess maybe I shouldn't do this because now if they have Call Against Command, they could like, yeah, they have Command and they're going to like Shock Shatter. No, they're just bolting. Okay, so they don't have Command then? Maybe they want to save it for the batter skull. Yeah, I'm gonna just sit on this till we have two more lands. Pyroblast is actually an okay draw because it means if they have forces in their deck still for some reason, we can pyroblast them. Hey, Nam, catching us right at the end here. We are, in fact, playing some Lurgacy, the best format in Magic. Poor Stoneforge. Alright, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, he's only got one point of power in play, right? So I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep playing Drago here until we hit one more land, so we can play this Battle Skull while still having uh, command protection up. This is the Hex menu music. Hex Shards of Fates, the fully digital TCG we stream here on the regular. And I know I don't get flagged for copyright when I use their, their music because they aren't pimpy about it, so... I just put them on in the background to drown out the children's shows. Alright, here's my Batter Skull. There are many like it, but this one is mine. And again, just like, in a situation like this, you always want to ask yourself the question, how do I lose this game where I'm really far ahead? And the answer to that question is, my opponent gets rid of this Batter Skull somehow, so we just want to play around every possible thing that could lead to my opponent being able to beat this Batter Skull. Turn 3, Blood Moon, D, so, you yeah, know, we're 2-1. This league, I like the sec. The sec's pretty reasonable. I don't know if I'd actually play it in an event, because I feel like I don't get enough free wins, but... It feels, it feels okay. I think if I was going to play a fair deck in Legacy that wasn't Grixis Delver, it would almost certainly be this. It seems very, very reasonable and powerful. Second Rest in Peace doesn't seem like it would be awful on the sideboard. The two Blood Moons are excellent. Um, any rate, thank you everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll be back on again uh, later this week for sure. My schedule is kind of up in the air this week because I don't... Uh, J Jake just started back at school, so I need to get all that figured out uh, with his school schedule and how my streaming schedule is going to line up. Remember, if you really enjoy my content, block out your calendars for this Saturday. I'm going to be doing a 12-hour stream, and if we hit the donation goal during that stream, it's going to extend it to a 24-hour stream. It's going to kick off about 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, and we'll be streaming uh, Magic and Hex for that time period. Uh, peace, folks, and I will catch y'all around later.